Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm smoking up a whole 24 pound uncured ham. Stay tuned. All right, so before I get started on this 24 pound ham, I do want to thank Lou from Sweet Lou's Barbecue in North Carolina. I reached out to him and thanks again, Lou, for taking my phone call and answering my questions. He gave me some ideas on what I should do with this 24 pound beast. So I'm going to incorporate some of the North Carolina style barbecue, kind of a meets Texas pulled pork, and I cannot wait to share this with you. Stay tuned. All right, so here's our 24 pound ham. Now this is the right rear leg of the pig and this is the pig's buttocks right here. How you doing there, big guy? So now Lou at his restaurant, he leaves the skin on, then he removes it, then he deep fries it and chops that in with his pulled pork. In this case, I'm gonna remove the entire skin and I'm gonna smoke that separate and I am gonna be deep frying it and chop it up with our pulled pork. So I'm just gonna start taking the skin off. Now I am using my Dell Strong fillet knife and this is super sharp and I love these Dell Strong knives. Now this is the first time that I actually use this knife, but it is extremely sharp. Okay, if you're interested in buying one, check out the links below. So I'm just going to start to remove the skin from the back of the ham. You can see there how sharp this knife is. Okay, just like that. And I'm simply going to start by pulling the skin back and removing the fat. Okay, you can kind of pull on it, it helps. Now, if I do get some of the meat on there, it's okay, but I'm gonna try not to get any meat on it. Okay, I got this side off. I'm just gonna start on this side right here. All right, so I've got the skin removed from the inside, so I'm just gonna flip the ham over. You can see how much skin is on this ham. Look at this. I'm gonna try not to punch any holes in the skin, but if I do, it really doesn't matter because I am gonna be smoking it and then deep frying it towards the end of the cook. So just keep pulling the skin back, and that aids in the skin coming off. See that? Pretty simple process. So for my subscribers right here in El Paso and Southern New Mexico, just in case you're wondering where I purchased this, I found a hidden gem on the West Texas side of El Paso. Just like the Marty Robbins song says, it's Coronado Prime Meats. I've heard of Coronado Prime Meats before, but I've never been there. So I stopped by this week and saw this ham and spoke to the owner and said, I have got to have that ham, and here it is. So if you guys live in El Paso or Southern New Mexico, check out Coronado Prime Meats. They have an amazing display of meats. They have exotic meats as well, and I will definitely be going back. All right, so I'm towards the end right here. Just have this little bit left. And again, just be nice and easy. Now I have skinned a hog before, so I have a little bit of experience when it comes to skinning a hog. And it's kind of the same process when you're making chicharron. So let's see how we did. I don't think I punctured the skin at all. Look at that, that looks good right there. So I'm just gonna set this aside. All right, so I am gonna be injecting this ham and I am using Big Papa Smoker's pork prod. I did mix up two batches, just follow the instructions on the package right there. And I do have it right here. So I'm using my pistol grip injector and I'm using the largest needle that I have. This is what I would normally use for a brisket. So you can see the size difference, okay? Now this one here has a bunch of holes around it and that's really gonna put some injection throughout this entire ham. So you wanna go in pretty deep, move that needle around and go ahead and inject. So you get it nice and puffy right there. That's what you want. So 
So in case you're wondering why I'm injecting the ham, a ham is very lean on the inside, okay? Although we have quite a bit of fat on the surface, actually it's not that much fat. The inside of the ham is extremely lean. So you want to keep that from drying out. Plus, this injection has a ton of flavor. All right, so let's mix up our rub. I am using a 50-50 mixture of salt and pepper, and not by volume, but by weight, okay? So I've got 150 grams of pepper and 150 grams of kosher salt. Just gonna put these in my shaker. And when I was talking to Lou, he uses a similar rub, just salt and pepper actually is all he uses, which is awesome. Okay, just cover up my shaker and give it a good mix. All right, so I was thinking about adding some mustard as a binder, but because the injection is still on the surface, that's gonna create a really nice binder for our salt and pepper rub. So I'm gonna go ahead and start applying our rub and applying pretty heavy, okay? Again, this is 24 pounds of ham, so we need all the seasoning we can get. It's a good solid layer of salt and pepper. All right, so I've got the ham completely seasoned up, and I used about 75% of the rub that I mixed up, and I got it all covered up. So I'm gonna pop this in my fridge overnight, let that injection really work its way throughout the entire ham, and also the seasoning to penetrate some of this meat, I'm gonna wake up really early because I have a funny feeling that this is gonna take a while to smoke. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning. All right, so it's the very next morning and I've got my smoker fired up, running at 275 degrees, and I am running some post oak today. So I'm just gonna slide my shelf out. And here's our 24 pound ham. It's actually probably only 22 pounds now or so since we took the skin off. So I did put the thickest part of the ham towards that firebox. And again, I am running at 275 degrees. Looks like it just barely cleared the top of my smoker. Now, when I spoke to Lou from Sweet Lou's Barbecue up in North Carolina, he did mention that he uses hickory and he also uses oak. Now, I don't have hickory. I'm just gonna roll this thing with pure oak. I'm gonna give this about five hours. We'll come back and check on the bark and see what it looks like, even get an internal temperature. Stay tuned. All right, so the total cook time has been five hours. Mm -hmm. But before I show you that ham, we gotta cook our skin. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna place this on my smoker. This is on the right side of my smoker. Just have these racks right here. And the only reason I'm using the racks is because I wanna keep that skin really nice and clean. And here it is. It is a really big piece of skin. It's got a bunch of fat on the bottom, so that's gonna render. So just spread it out. I do have some kosher salt, so I'm just gonna add this to the surface just to help draw out some of that moisture and get it nice and crispy. All right, just like that, I'm gonna slide the shelf back in and close the door. We'll check back on that in a bit. All right, so let's check on our ham. Again, it's been five hours at 275 degrees and look at that color it's starting to split open right here so the first thing i'm going to do is get an internal temperature I'm going to go deep on this bad boy all right so five hours in we're sitting at 138 degrees 138 and a half degrees oh man look at those juices just fly out of there that's that injection so I'm gonna be spritzing with apple cider vinegar and water. Here's that Carolina piece I promised you guys earlier. It's gonna give it a really good flavor and keep our surface nice and moist. All right, so I'm also gonna turn the ham slightly, just like this, just to get some more of this meat exposed to that smoke. Spritz a little bit more. We'll check back in a couple of hours. Stay tuned. All right, so the total cook time has been 10 hours. Let's check on our pork right here. I know I was calling it a ham earlier, that's what it is, but technically it's not a ham because it's not cured. But let's get an internal temperature and see where we're at. All right, looks like we're sitting at 182, 83 degrees. So I'm gonna let this ride again. We're at 10 hours. I'm thinking in another couple of hours, 
This will be ready, nice and tender. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz it a little bit more. Got a really nice color, really nice bark developing. All right, so our pork is ready and the total cook time was 11 and a half hours. I pulled it off, put it in a pan, and just covered it with foil and it has been sitting on my counter for one hour. Now, as far as the skin, I was gonna deep fry the skin, but quite honestly, you're gonna see this here in a minute. It is ready to go, it doesn't need to be fried, except for a couple of little spots, and I'm gonna show you, check this out. All right, so here's our skin. As you can tell, it is really crunchy. I actually tore off a couple of pieces from right here, and it is really good. Now, there's a couple of spots right here where the skin is still pretty soft, okay? So if your skin ends up like this, you can definitely cut it up and fry it. But I found out what the issue was. So the fat is really thick on this side, so it didn't render enough to get that skin nice and crispy, and I also could have put a little bit more salt in these areas to get it nice and crispy. So I'm simply gonna cut these pieces off right here. I think if I turn it around, it's gonna be easier. You can see that fat is nice and crispy. Look at that. It is really crispy. Okay, so here's that kind of soft piece right here. You can actually deep fry that, end up with some nice chicharrones or pork rinds. And here's the other piece right here right around here. Okay, there you go. So I'm not gonna be using these pieces. I might actually deep fry them later, but as far as this skin, it is really nice and crunchy. Just gonna break it apart, cut it up in little chunks. Look at that. This is really good. Look at that, really nice and crispy. Actually, I can just break it with my hands. All right, so I'm simply just chopping up the crackling right here. I broke it up into small pieces. And now I'm just cutting it up. I'm gonna mix that in to our pulled pork here in a minute. This is crunchy goodness right here. All right, so let's take a look at our pork or our ham, whatever you wanna call it here. Look at that beauty right there. Again, it's been resting for an hour. And this thing is fall apart tender. I can tell you that because when I was probing it, it was really nice and tender. Watch this. Look at that. This is money right here. So I'm just gonna shred some of it. Man, look at how good this is. It's got a really nice smoke ring. I wanna get some of this bark. Oh man. Remember how I talked about a ham being really lean? Look at this. There's hardly any fat in this. Now this is still really hot, but I do have some cotton gloves under these nitrile gloves, which makes it a little easier to handle. But man, this thing is just falling apart. All right, I'm gonna shred some of this up and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so I've got two piles of pork. This is gonna be my Texas style with nothing on it, but just a little bit of this rub from PS Seasoning. This is the Notorious PIG, and I love this rub for pulled pork. It's gonna add some really good flavor to it. So just mix this up. And again, Texas pulled pork isn't overly shredded, okay? This is what you get right here, nice barky pieces. Just mix it up really good. Okay, and that's about it. I am really liking how lean this is right here. Now this is gonna be my Carolina barbecue and I'm gonna cut this up or chop this up. I am using my Dow Strong cleaver. All right, so I've got my Carolina barbecue chopped up. So I have my Carolina sauce right here. This is apple cider vinegar, which is 12 ounces, two tablespoons of crushed red pepper, one tablespoon of black pepper, and one tablespoon of salt. Really easy. Just put in this jar this morning and it's been marinating all day. So just shake it up really good. Open it up and dump some in your barbecue, just like that. Now you can go with one tablespoon of the crushed red pepper, but I like it kind of spicy, so I put two tablespoons of crushed red pepper. Really simple recipe and so good. So just mix this up really good. Oh yes, this smells absolutely delicious. I'm gonna grab some of our crackling right here and dump it in there, just like this. 
I could have put this in a bigger bowl, but we're going to make it work. I'm going to add a little bit more sauce. And just mix that up. And that sauce is going to get that crackling nice and tender as well, but it's still going to have a little bit of a crunch. All right, let me wash up my hands, clean up this area, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so I've got myself a nice hamburger bun right here. Just gonna grab some of this delicious Carolina Q. And it smells good in my kitchen right now. Just like that, a nice pile. Remember, this is a North Carolina meets Texas. And I'm gonna grab some of the Texas pulled pork and place it on top of the Carolina barbecue. Get some of those nice barky pieces. And this is a monster sandwich, okay? So just like that. Top it off. Let's give this bad boy a taste. All right, let's give this monster sandwich a try and see how we did. I can tell you right now, it's going to be off the chain delicious. If I can get my mouth around this. There we go. Monster bite coming up. Mm. Wow, all I can say is wow, this sandwich right here is the absolute best thing that I've ever eaten in my life. It's got that really good North Carolina flavor with the vinegar, and then you got that Texas pulled pork. This is absolutely delicious. I'm going to take me another bite. Man, I can't get over how good this is. You know that crackling that we cut up and put into the Carolina pulled pork? That takes it over the top. This is absolutely delicious. But you know what? Don't take my word for it. I'm gonna fix up a few sandwiches and go visit a few neighbors and see what they think. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we're here with Ruben and Michelle. If you guys remember, they did come out in one of my previous videos and they tried some pulled pork sandwiches. It was a Carolina versus Texas. So now I'm gonna surprise them. They don't know what they're trying and you're gonna see their expressions with me. So there's a sandwich for each of you guys. Hold it tight. Wow. <laughs> All right. Dig in, man. <laughs> it's okay to make a mess. <laughs> what do you think? has some spice to it. So I added a little bit more red pepper flake to the, some sauce that I made. Anything crunchy texture wise? Yeah. yeah. It's a pork rind. Oh. <clears throat> it's actually the skin from, this was actually a, a whole ham. So the back leg of a pig. And I took the skin off, smoked it separate, got nice and crunchy, oh God, chopped it up. So the last time you guys tried a sandwich, it was a uh, Texas style pulled pork and then you had a Carolina barbecue sandwich. Well, this is both of them mixed. So at the very bottom, you have the Carolina barbecue, and on the top, you have the Texas pulled pork. Oh, so, the yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really good. good. Yeah, huh? Oh my gosh, yes. Small flavor, it's, it's good. Awesome. And it's very good tender, stuff. very, it's juicy too, even though it like, looks like it won't give a lot of flavor in that. Yeah. Well, good. I feel like this one was just both, so the, the Carolina one was a little bit too overpowering for me, whereas this one's not. Yeah. And it's also Texas, it's mm -hmm. like my The peppery. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. But it's yeah. like not, yeah, I like it because it's not as, the Carolina was good, but to me it's too vinegary, and this is like perfect awesome. Nice. So, nice. Very, very good. Well, thanks again. Glad you guys enjoyed I'm glad it. I got to sample it again. All right. So. <laughs> yep, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, we're here with Bob and Diana with two N's. And thanks again for being my guinea pigs on this taste test. So, you guys tasted the Carolina barbecue and the Texas pulled pork the last time, right? Yeah. So you tell me what you think about this sandwich right here. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, this one right here? Yeah. Okay. And I got one for Diana too, with All two right. eggs. Wow. Go ahead and just start. Yeah. Don't hold back. <laughs> oh my There's God. a napkin. Thanks. Oh. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Bob, you just lost your here. napkin. What do you think, Bob? Mm -hmm. What do you think about the flavors, texture? Do you notice anything different? Oh, man. Nope. Uh, it's a little tangy. Mm -hmm. A little tangy. Oh. I'm used to pulled pork. 
original pork being real saucy. Right. And but it's, this is it's not, so good. It's so good. No sauce like needed? No. It's just exploding <laughs> with Very flavor. Very tender. Wow. This is the best pulled pork I've ever had. Really? <laughs> yeah. Um, I do know there's something touchy. Yeah? Yeah, there's a... Um, what is that? Is it like the edge? It's a uh, pork rind. The pork skin. Oh. I saw you making yep. that. That's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. Oh, this is so good. So, what it is on the bottom of that sandwich, you have Carolina barbecue at the very bottom, and it's piled on top with Texas pulled pork, Texas style pulled pork. So the Carolina has the vinegar based sauce, the red pepper flake, but they also cut up their the skin. It turns like crunchy, like crackling, and they mix it in and chop it up with their with their barbecue. Oh man, it is very good. Yeah. Wow. And I like the spice. Mmm. It's a hybrid. Yeah, that's exactly it. So. Wow. Awesome. Well, thanks again. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Mm. Oh, thank you, man. Super. Very good. So there yeah. you have it, folks. My neighbors enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it. Again, it's the absolute best thing I've ever eaten in my life. Not just the best pulled pork sandwich. I mean the best thing that I have ever eaten in my life. That is so good, and I will never do pulled pork another way. So if I didn't already mention it, the last four hours of the cook, I cranked that temperature up to 300 degrees, and that really helped get that skin nice and crispy. So the total cook time on the skin was four hours at 300 degrees, and you end up with that nice, crispy skin. Don't forget to check out the description box. There you're gonna find links to a lot of the items that I use in this video. If this is your first time here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.